Okay, welcome to RCC Physics 4D class right here. This class is called Modern Physics. If you haven't had me before, my, my name is Dr. Terry O'Neill. I have been teaching here at RCC for, well, since about 1981 right here. Got my PhD in high energy astrophysics and might be able to use a little bit of that material in this class right here. Also did research uh, with the University of California Riverside for 30 years in high energy astrophysics. So again, I'll bring up a little bit of that in this class right here. Okay, so what I want you to do is if you go on to Canvas, go into Files, and you can print out the syllabus. So I want to go over the syllabus right here. The syllabus, the first thing they bring up is the textbooks right here. Now I haven't seen any really good modern physics book, but there's a lot of them. Here's one in particular. This one is the survey one right here. It's called Modern Physics. There's one I wrote down here, Tipler Modern Physics. There's Gassiorowitz Modern Physics. There's tons more. To me, they're all the same right here. I won't stick to any of these books. I'm going to use my own book right here because I'm teaching this class a little bit differently. I'm going to teach this class the way I wish it was taught to me when I was at your level right here rather than just following the book right here. Go ahead and get a book that says Modern Physics. Don't get the, the last edition. Go back an edition so you can get it a lot cheaper right here. But at least get one book that says Modern Physics. You'll need it because we'll probably cover still 70% of the material in this class will probably be, be in this book someplace right here. Now at the at the bottom, I have two other books. I have one by French. It's called Special Relativity. Here is the book right here. This is the book they used at MIT back in the 1960s. So this is over 50 years old right here. It's a good book. If you're a physics major, I would get this book right here. It's a, it's a, it's a good best book I've seen on special relativity right here. But this can't be your only book because we're going out of special relativity. There's another one I wrote in here by uh, Leonard Susskind called Quantum Mechanics right there. And that he's, Susskind is at Stanford, Stanford professor, and he has a pretty good book. You can't just buy that one. It might look a little cryptic, but by the end of the semester, it won't right here. But if you're going to get one book, get a modern physics book right there. Uh, okay. And again, I'm going to go outside all of these books right here. So, but we'll stick to it mostly. Okay. Uh, and now for the rest of this page on the syllabus goes through the, the grading right here. You notice the homework is worth 40% of the grade right here. Well, I put everything out of 1,000 points, so that's 400 points. Again, if you go on to Canvas, go to Files, there's also the homework assignments. All of them are there. There's 11 homework assignments right there. You might as well print out homework one right here. Print out homework one, assignment one. Right here. Okay. These are all single-sided homework, not like 4A where we had double-sided right here. There's 11 total right here. Print it out. Since there's 11, you have a little bit, you have on the average of a week. Sometimes we give you two weeks right here because there's more than 11 weeks in the course. This first assignment is due next Tuesday right here, which would be, uh, well, the the first Tuesday after the first day of class, right there. It'll be, it'll, it will tell you on the announcements in Canvas when they're due also. When you're done, after you've 
downloaded this, you work the problems out one per page right here. And I don't want two problems per page, just one problem per page, even though sometimes they just barely take up any space. That's okay, you can have a lot of empty space on the page. Once you get done, take a picture of them all, convert them to a PDF file, I have to have PDF, and then send them back up into Canvas under assignments, assignments, and there'll be places called homework dump one, homework dump two, all the way up to homework dump 11 right here. So those will cover where all the assignments go right here. Okay. Uh, the quizzes right here. The quizzes are also in Canvas. If you go to quizzes, we'll have weekly quizzes, probably every Monday. They'll multiple choice, maybe three to 10 questions right here. Uh, and you'll probably be given an hour at most. You wouldn't need any more than an hour right there, but an hour at most right there. Uh, they're just going to cover what we went through the previous week right here. Okay, and so there were 30%, which is quite a bit right here. And then we have the final exam, which is also going to be in Canvas of quizzes, but it's just going to be a much bigger quiz. It's going to be 100 questions. It won't be three to 10 questions. It'll be 100 questions, comprehensive. And there, you know, you're given at least three hours, probably more right here to do that. Okay, then once I get done, I'll just add up everyone's points right there. And the final exam is given by the points down below. You notice you only need 850 to get an A, 700 to 850 to get a B, and six to 700 to get a C right there. Okay, so there is just how the grading is done right there. Uh, now, this class, I'm going to be making a lot of YouTube videos, short ones. They won't cover the whole class period. A few of them will be one class period. They'll probably go from, say, 20 minutes to an hour at most right here. I would watch them repeatedly. If, if there's anything unclear or you just really want to learn it, watch it a few times right there. I always make these one week in advance. So I, I film down here every Tuesday and Thursday afternoons and they're posted the following Tuesday and the following Thursday right here. Now, what about contacting me for office hours or whatever? Well, one way you can do this is again by Canvas mail, you can send questions, homework questions on Canvas mail right there. It's not the best way for me to answer it. You could actually send it to me, my RCC email, but it's probably better to send it through Canvas mail right there. And, but it, I would much rather have one-on-one -on -one contact, at least for office hours and stuff. So if you have questions where you want to answer it maybe through Zoom, then all you have to do is just have, you just send me an email saying I'd like to Zoom with you to ask questions. It doesn't have to be Zoom, it can be Google Meet, it could even be FaceTime, I don't care. I want you to ask questions, that's, that's very important for me. I won't know how you're doing unless you do ask questions. So I implore you, ask a lot of questions right here. Uh, now, one thing I do want you to do this week is I want you to go into Canvas Mail and I want you to send me, each one of you, what your math background is. So I, what is your math background? Math background. What is your math background? That is. What have you taken past 1A, Math Calculus 1A? And uh, do the same thing for physics. What is your physics? What have you taken past 4A? Have you taken 4B and 4C right there? So also physics. Background right there. And then what do you hope to major in? Tell me what you hope to major in right here, your major. And 
anything else you want to say right here? Anything else you want to say? Just, and I need to do it to me this week so I know that you're getting these, these videos and you're looking at your mail right here. So send me this information. What is your, what math classes are you taking now and have you taken before right there? What about the math requirements in this class right here? The math requirements in here is, I would say that this math is probably easier than electromagnetism right here. Uh, mostly algebra and trig, actually. But later on, we'll get into vectors. Vectors, which you're probably already used to. Our notation will be a little bit different. We'll get into complex numbers. Complex numbers right there. We'll get into matrices. But our matrices will just be two by two. We're not gonna, we won't even get to three by three. So they're gonna be quite simple, just two by twos and one by two column vectors right here. Uh, waves, which you've probably seen before, waves. And then when we put many waves together, they call those Fourier series, Fourier series. You probably, they don't teach that here, but they're pretty simple and I'll go through that right there. Now, when we get to quantum mechanics, the main equation in quantum mechanics is Schrodinger's equation and that's a differential equation. Differential equation. Now, it's actually a partial differential equation. But I don't expect you to already know how to solve differential. I can teach you how to solve this one differential equation. Now you have to solve it for some different objects right here. And usually what comes out of here is something called special functions right there. Special functions. Okay, but most of our integrals will either be one or zero. You know, so I want, our integrals are going to be easy right here. Okay. Now, you notice this class is called Modern Physics. When did modern physics begin right here? When is modern? Well, you notice around by the end of the 1800s, uh, let me just erase this. By the end of the 1800s, we have known about classical mechanics, which is Newtonian mechanics, and we knew about electromagnetism. But when you, and then when you combine those two, you get things, when electromagnetism explains light, optics, uh, classical mechanics explains thermodynamics, you can, and so by that time we had known almost all of physics by the la end of the 1800s. And even Lord Kelvin said maybe physics is over with. Maybe we're done with all the fundamental physics and all we have to do is figure out the constants to a few more decimal places. Only thing that was left hanging was a few little threads that needed to be figured out right here. A few questions, two in particular. And when they tried to delve into those two questions, the whole ceiling fell and everything changed right here. When I mean everything changed, I mean our whole notion of space and our whole notion of time changed. Our whole notion of reality changed right here. And even our uh, notion of locality. Locality means that that uh, this pen can't be affected by stars light years away right now. Why? Because there's no way, it's too far away. But in, we'll see later that this pen can be affected by things that are at the other end of the universe right here. So, so everything changed right here. And that's, so modern physics really begins around 1900 right here. We're not gonna go to the present day, we'll go up to maybe almost 1930. 
like from 1900 to 1930. That was the big revolutionary period right here. After 1930, the difficulty shoots up exponentially, and we don't want to get into that right there. Uh, so, so all of our, we will talk about a few ideas, the contemporary ideas. What are the particles of, of nature right here, the particle zoo, and so on right here. OK. Uh, so how come we didn't notice all of this revolutionary stuff before? Well, because really, they, they begin in the realm outside that we're used to right here. That is, if I were to come along here and plot out, let's see, I make a plot right here. And on this scale, I'm going to put size. And on this scale, I'm going to put speed. And this, I'm going to put what what equations do we use to handle the mechanics of motion right here for these different regions right here? Well, let me put some scale into here. First of all, we know that, that there is a upper limit on the speed right here, so, which is the speed of light. So there will be C. C we're using as the speed of light. Nothing can be above that, so that's the top of this curve right here. There's also going to be something over here, which is the edge of the observed universe right here. Edge. Edge. Right there. So we know everything is within this. The edge of the universe is about 46 billion times 10 to the ninth light years. Now remember, we can't see that. Remember, the only thing we can see are things that hit our eye. So, so we only see things, we only see things like right here, but we can extrapolate back to when they began and we can extrapolate back to a size of the universe right now at about 46 billion light years. This speed of light, if we put it in miles per hour, it's about 700 million miles per hour. Now, just to put some other objects in here, just to keep it scale, if I were to put in a different speed of 1 million miles an hour, well, if that's 700 million miles an hour, if I divide that into 700 pieces, <laughs> that's just a little teeny piece down here, but I'm going to blow it up a little bit just so I can see it. You know, we'll, we'll make that 1 million miles an hour, 10 to the 6 miles per hour. Okay. Now over here, this is 46 billion light years. I think I'll put 10 million light years. Well, 10 million compared to this is about 5,000 times smaller. Well, 5,000 times smaller than this is way down here. I don't want to squeeze everything there, so I'm, the scale won't be linear right here. We'll make this 10 to the seventh light years, light years. And then let me put one other thing in here. How about the, uh, the size of a dust particle? Dust. Now, if that's 10 million light years, the size of a dust particle, you wouldn't even see it here. I, but I'm going to blow it up right here. We'll put it right there. Dust particle. This is about uh, 10 to the minus 5 meters, maybe. Maybe a little smaller. Somewhere around that right there. Okay, just to give us some sort of a scale right there. Now, when we look at our realm of applicability, or at least mechanics applicability, where is Newton's laws valid in this whole plot right here? Well, they're only valid, at least they've only been tested in this little region right here. That's the, remember, this was really just a little dot down there, but that's the only place that classical mechanics or Newton's laws were tested. And uh, so this is classical mechanics. 
classical mechanics. Okay. Well, in about 1905, uh, Einstein rewrote classical mechanics right there. And then we, he came up and said, well, we can go all the way up to here. This, this doesn't work up here. What works is if we go to this region right here, this region right there is called relativistic. Relativistic mechanics. Or another word is special relativity, special relativity. Okay, Einstein figured this all out in 1905. And again, this covers classical mechanics. That is, if you take this and make yourself go slow, it becomes Newton's laws. But Newton's laws don't become this. This is this isn't this is only an approximate correction, right? I mean, it's not exactly correct. This green one is the one that's correct right here. Okay, well, what about when you get out past this 10 to the 7? This is like the size of our local group of galaxies right here. Well, out there is something called general relativity. General relativity. Einstein did that too. That is, he did this in 1916, did this in 1905. This was 1916. Uh, all he did was, this is a special case, this is the more general case right here, and he rewrote gravity right here. So if you when, when you're looking at Newton's law of gravity and you get up to very large objects, it breaks down and you have to go into general relativity. But when general relativity, general relativity works this way, but this doesn't work that way. Okay, what about over here on this side right here? This little section right here. This little section right here is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics. This is where all of chemistry is pretty much right here. Uh, you know, atoms aren't moving more than a million miles an hour and they're certainly smaller than dust, so this is where all chemistry is right here. A lot more things too. So this is quantum mechanics right here. Einstein started this right here, actually in 1905, and with Planck a little earlier. But it was a lot of people that worked on this right here. Niels Bohr, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, a lot of people right here. And, uh, and it took a little while because this is quite strange compared to the other things right here. It's quite, quite a bit different. Uh, and so, and, and actually Einstein started to fight against it. It didn't make sense to him right here. And it still didn't make sense to a lot of people today, but it seems to be accurate right here. Uh, so this, this was done by quite a few people right here. It's called quantum mechanics right there. And then this region up here. This region, you notice what we're doing is we're putting together quantum mechanics with relativistic mechanics. This is relativistic quantum mechanics. Relativistic quantum mechanics, right here. So this is what happens when you have particle accelerators, things that are going really fast right here. The only thing is, this works for this down here, but this doesn't extrapolate up that way right here. So really, when you think about it right here, there's really this works all the way down right here. So there's this and there's this. So there's really just two big theories in physics. There's this, which is 
relativistic quantum mechanics, sometimes they call it quantum field theory, sometimes they call it the standard model, which is this. And over here, you have general relativity, which is this right here. And those two, they cannot put together yet. They're, they're, that's why they always want to look at black holes as kind of where the two come together. Gravity is strong in a small spot right here. So, Okay, so in this class, what are we going to be covering right here? Well, the first four weeks of this class will be in this section. Oops, sorry, all the way down to here. We'll be in this, we'll learn special relativity in the first four weeks, right there. Okay, and then we won't be learning about this. It's a little more difficult. We won't be learning about this. It's just too much time and stuff. So we're only gonna learn about this and this in this class right here. Well, we'll spend about two or three weeks not just on how this transition occurred right here because it took a while. Uh, we we'll spend about three weeks along with the math, you know, the, the vectors and complex numbers and so forth. And then we'll spend the rest of the time on this section right here in quantum mechanics. And I'm going to teach it a little differently than the book. We're going to go to the simplest possible system right here, which they don't even put in the book right there. And we're going to learn all of the rules right here. So we'll learn all the rules from the simplest possible system. Okay, and we'll beat it to death right here. And then we can apply that to qubits and quantum gates and quantum computers and quantum encryption and quantum entanglement, quantum teleportation. So we'll handle, look at all those from this simple system right here. And then we'll finally get into one-dimensional systems. Why? Because they're a little simpler right here. Things in one dimension, right here, just like in four classical mechanics, you always looked at motion in one dimension. And then we'll jump to three dimensions right here because that's where all the richness of quantum mechanics comes out. And we'll go to hydrogen. We won't go any further on the periodic table than hydrogen. We'll try to dig into it as deep as we can. We can't go into it all the way because hydrogen, even though it's just a proton electron, it's a complicated beast and has a lot of intricate patterns right there. So that will be the entire course, just this section and this section. And so on the next lecture, we'll start in on relativity right here. Okay, and hopefully you'll have a good time in this class. Okay, and again, don't forget to send that, that uh, email right here. Okay, thank you.